In this example problem, we're going to calculate the composite section properties for the uh, Florida I-beam section with a cast-in-place deck that's on top that has been made composite with the, uh, the precast section. Um, we have the section or the section properties shown here for our precast test section, and then we have an 8-inch by 96-inch deck that's cast on top or cast in place on top. Our deck concrete, we have a 4.5 KSI uh, deck concrete and an 8.5 uh, KSI beam concrete. Um, we can use these to figure out the modulus for our beam and the uh, modulus elasticity for the uh, concrete in our deck. And then we can take the modulus of our deck divided by the modulus of our beam to find our, our modular ratio. And we'll use this to transform uh, our deck into a an equivalent area uh, that's compatible with our, our beam concrete. The first thing that we're going to do is uh, we want to calculate our different deck properties. Um, so we'll need to find our deck area, the deck moment of inertia, the centroid of the deck from the bottom of the precast section, and then also the composite height. Uh, so first the deck area is just the thickness of our deck, which is 8 inches, uh, times the width of our deck, which is 96 inches which will give us an area here of 768 square inches. The moment of inertia for our deck uh, will have 1 12th uh, times our deck width, width 96 inches, uh, times the deck thickness 8 inches to the third, uh, which will get a moment of inertia for the deck here of 4,096 inches to the fourth. The centroid of the deck is the uh, distance from the bottom of our section to the centroid of the deck. And this distance is going to be 45 inches, which is the depth of our precast section plus 8 inches over 2, which will give us 49 inches. And then finally, our overall composite height is 45 inches uh, plus 8 inches, which will be 53 inches. So um, a couple things to note. Uh, the one thing is uh, I'm finding my deck properties here uh, without transforming the area. Um, I'm going to transform the areas on the um, next slide, so uh, we'll take care of that there. Um, the other thing to note is I don't include uh, any haunch um, in these calculations. Um, so these are all without haunch. Um, so just to kind of highlight it, uh, a lot of times in these systems there will be uh, a haunch that's built in. And what this haunch is, is it's a, a distance between the top of the precast section and the bottom of the deck. And uh, what the haunch does is it, um, it allows the or it, it makes this, the structure easier to construct um, by allowing the height of the deck slab to be adjusted. And what this does is it allows uh, matching of the design roadway profile um, designed by the traffic engineer uh, with the actual structure. So uh, anyway, you can just add in this haunch by um, adding it uh, into our composite height and also adding it into our uh, centroid of deck. Um, so that's how we would, would include that. Next, we're going to find the uh, composite section properties. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to add the gross, or to find our composite area, we'll take our gross area. So uh, 869.58 uh, square inches. And then we're going to add in our transformed deck. So our, use our modular ratio 0.728. Uh, times the area of our deck, 768. And this will give us a composite area of uh, 1,428.7 square inches. So next we want to find the composite centroid, and we're going to find this from the bottom. So we have our gross area, 869.58.
uh, times the distance between the bottom and the centroid of our gross area is 20.21. And then we'll add in our transformed section, so our transformed deck, so 0.728 times the area of our deck, 768, and then times the distance between the bottom of the section and the centroid of our deck, 49 inches. We're going to divide this by our composite area, 1428.7 square inches, and we'll get a Y composite from the bottom uh, equal to 31.48 inches. Um, we can see our Y of our um, gross section was 20.1, so the area of the deck pulled that Y up. So uh, conceptually, it makes sense. Next, we can find our composite moment of inertia. Uh, to do this, we want to first have our gross area of inertia, or gross moment of inertia, 226,581 inches to the fourth, plus our AD squared component, so 869. 0.58 square inches, our area, times the distance between the centroid of our gross section and the centroid of our composite section. So 31.48 minus 20.21 squared plus our modular ratio 0.728 times our i for our uh, our i for our deck which is 4096 inches to the fourth plus our modular ratio 0.728 uh, times our deck area 768 and then times our d squared component. So 31.48 minus 49 inches squared. So here we'll find our IC to be equal to 511,628 inches to the fourth. So now we have our uh, composite moment of inertia, our composite section, and our composite area. So uh, we now found our uh, composite section properties. Um, so shown here are our non-composite and composite section properties for our section, and we will use these uh, to check our stresses. So um, I wanted to just kind of clarify real quick when we should use our composite and non-composite section properties. Um, so first, when we're checking our stresses at transfer, um, we're not going to have uh, the deck cast, cast yet. Um, so at this point, we're going to use all non-composite section properties. Um, so you can see here, we can, we'll find our stresses at transfer from our pre-stressing and also from our self-weight. And we can add those stresses together to get the total stresses in our section. And uh, we have no stress in our deck at this point because we don't have a deck. During construction, we're still going to use our non-composite section properties. Uh, when the deck is being cast, it's not going to contribute any strength at this point. So at this point, we're going to get weight from the deck, but we're not going to get any strength from it. So we're still using our non-composite uh, section properties. Then when we get to our stresses at service, uh, we're going to use both our non-composite and composite section properties. We'll use our non-composite section properties for all of our loads that are, were applied before the deck was placed. And we'll use our composite section properties for all the loads that were applied after the deck was placed. So you can see here, in this case, our live load is the only load that's applied after the deck was placed um, and allowed to harden. 
So um, only our live load is uh, resisted by our um, deck. And I, I guess I also include um, any any other superimposed dead loads that are applied after the deck is placed would also be included here. Um, so you can see when we're adding up these stresses from the construction stage and from our next stage, we're going to get kind of a, a discontinuous um, stress diagram. Uh, so we'll, we'll need to find the maximum, where when checking things, we'll need to check the maximum stress in our um, section at the top of our uh, precast section and then also in the top of the deck. Um, so, you know, we'll have a maximum compression stress in both the top of the section and the top of the deck. Um, and then, you know, also the, the tension in the bottom of the section. Um, so anyway, that uh, concludes this example.